it seems we've done two of the categories out of ten. You're so good to go. Yeah. It will get more interesting as we go along. The Lord will give me strength. Hallelujah. <laughs> but speaking of strength, how do you gather the strength? I, this is just of um, category, but how do you gather the strength to do all this? Well, um, I, I describe myself as a tough-minded Afro-optimist. Um, I believe in the African spirit. I'm a very ardent uh, believer in Dr. Otabel's preaching that Africa will rise again. Mm. And I believe that whatever we are doing as Lead Africa, growing families, growing young people deliberately, is part of the process of what will lead to the economic, social, and every other transformation of Africa. So that's your milk and honey? Yes. And that's what keeps you going? Yes. All right. So every morning you have milk and honey? Yes. To keep you going? Yes. All right. I like Because I believe that God has blessed some of us and plucked some of us from some situations for some purpose, something higher other than ourselves. And it is our responsibility to support the realization of that higher purpose. We'll come back to this when we get to the love and romance part. Because... <laughs> because if what has Africa got to do with romance? <laughs> because if somebody's looking and they're saying that, okay, so... You've been created for a particular purpose, yeah. but you have a family. Yeah. How does your family come into this conversation? How do they align? How do you also influence the growth of their own purpose, etc.? So we'll come back to that conversation. Sorry. But for now, I want us to talk about intellectual health. I think one of the things that, oh, actually, one of the things that my own personal turn on is when I listen to you speak. Mm. Sometimes. Nice. Not when Good, to know. Not when <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. I'm taking yes. it. <laughs> but I also think that it's actually not just me, sadly. But you make a lot of sense. You're one of the people, and a number of people have said this, that you're quiet, very humble, almost unassuming, but you make so much sense. So talk to us a little bit about your intellectual health, how life, how you cultivate all that wisdom, how you know that you know, and yet you're silent most of the time until you have to speak. Well, um, two things. I think one is a certain appetite for knowledge. I've, I've always been hungry for and curious to acquire knowledge. Uh, in my early to mid teens, I consumed the newspapers as if my life depended on it. And invariably, that also helped me in the classroom. Um, those days, we, there used to be what it was called set, which is spectator, mirror, daily graphic, and types. You sound so old. Yes, I am old. You're only 50. <laughs> yes. Which is like the new that's half. That's half a century. Uh, it's, it's not a child's play. <laughs> like, well, you just said 50, really? All right. Uh, that's not a child's play. Mm -hmm. Being in this in Kruma, Ghana, 40, 40, 50. It's not a child's play. <laughs> uh, uh, when you had to uh, buy raw kinky before it is uh, cooked, 81. All right. So, Basically, uh, I've been a very curious um, seeker of knowledge because I realized one of the things that helped me avoid trouble in my teen years was immersing myself in reading. Mm. So I, I, those who grew up with me in Kotobari don't know I was never troublesome. I was never part of any gang. I was never part of those who cause problems because I was always Unless reading. Unless they give you money, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was always reading, yeah. always in the room reading, uh, reading the newspapers. I'll read all the articles, all the feature stories. I read everything. I read everything. So that also allowed me to travel in my mind. Uh, one of my mates, Nana Damwa, wrote a book entitled The Excursions in My Mind. Mm. So I used to have these excursions in my mind, just reading. And then later on, I jump onto magazines. And so um, I read every magazine. Uh, I read anything. And, and I think that has helped in the work that I do. So I'm able to consult, coach, and mentor in, in various technical fields. 
just because I have a slight idea. And today I still read, I still read, I subscribe to a number of online mentors. And uh, through that, I expand my scope and my breadth of knowledge. So intellectually, I think I'll score myself. Um, I'm still not there yet, so I'll score myself a seven or eight. Uh, this eight, so like the <laughs> lucky number, eight. Yeah. All right. You have all this breadth and depth of knowledge, but you don't speak until you need to speak, which brings us into your emotional health and um, the stability that you have with your emotions. How did you develop that? It's been through learning. Um, I've, I've read a lot about, um, and, and here, this aspect of my life, I pick a lot from Eastern religions. Um, if you look at the monks, if you look at um, um, those gurus and religious masters, they are some of the most humble people you would find. For all the impact that Mahatma Gandhi made, his dressing was just a linen cloth, nothing much to his name. And so I think the more you, you grow in this our field of, of, of uh, personal development, coaching, mentoring, the more you begin to downplay the self. And when I didn't know any better, I used to be so concerned about my appearance when I was going to train. But now I care less about what I wear because it's not about me, it's about the people that I'm going to work with, exactly. So I think the more you, you, you grow personally, the more you begin to disregard the self. And that's how come I, anybody who knows me, sometimes people invite me and they say, give us a, a profile. I never throw out my academic credentials. Even though I will say that I am highly educated by any standard anywhere in the world. I have two diplomas, one bachelor's, one MBA. I have 37 certificates from different training programs, but I've never ever included this in any profile anywhere because it is not necessary. For me, they are input, they are the ingredients that make the soup. When somebody is eating soup, he's not interested in how uh, the number of garden eggs and the number of pepper you put into this. He's looking at the end product, the ultimate product. Is the soup nice? They don't care whether it was seven pepper or five. Ed. And so the plane or app of our academic credits, and I have two master's degrees, and I have a PhD, and so what? What have you done with it? How many lives have you changed with, with that? So it's not the dressing, it's the impact you are going to make in people's lives. And so I have learned to downplay myself. I have learned to rather focus on the person I'm working with. That's how, and some people see that as unassuming or humble. But I take that as a compliment. Yeah, I think it's it's knowing who you are and yes. being comfortable in who you are. And I and just for purposes of those listening, I think it's a, a no. It's also not necessarily disregarding yourself, but also realizing your sense of worth. Yeah. Because if you know who you are and you know that you're already worthy and nothing can take away your worth, you don't go about touting it everywhere you go. So I like that very much. All right, but how did so you developed it by um, reading and understanding some of the Eastern cultures, etc. If somebody wants to cultivate that kind of behavior, what kind of practices must they? And we can tie this into the intellectual, mm. because since I've kind of matched the two, what kind of practices must they go through? I think mean, you said it. One is knowing who you are, your own sense of worth and purpose how outside that, of. Though? I was like, yeah, you have to embark on it. That's not, there's no pill I can give you. Um, you you'd have to get a coach to help you to discover your own life purpose. Um, as I said, when you live for something higher, the present doesn't really matter. And so you have to discover who you are and there's a process and there's a system for helping to support people to do that. Then you have to value yourself, your own sense of self-worth, devout of your, your demographic characteristics and backgrounds because those things don't make up who you are your ethnicity is not you 
your academic qualification is not you your religion is not you your profession is not you who you are is who you are when these things have been taken away yes, from you okay. and so you need to embark on that quest on that journey and then as i the third one for me will be placing the emphasis on the other person and not on you so in terms of um the practices and getting to know and understand yourself and cultivate a sense of self so you start the journey where do you start from because these that, are things that bother course. people yes, i know it's a whole, to course, a whole but... program on, on, on how to help mm. people to discover uh, themselves but I'll, I'll just give a very simple um, um, framework uh, for this number one what makes you angry in life just take a sheet of paper and write all of that down Number two, what makes you happy in life? Write them down. Number three, what makes you sad? Write them down. These are pointers. These are pointers to who you are as an individual, as a person. If you can answer these questions very critically, you would pay attention to the fact that some things run through it. Absolutely. The some patterns. experiences run through it. There are some patterns to these questions. It is a pointer to who you are. And when you have discovered that, you then need to embark on a quest to develop yourself in these real things. Uh -huh. Forgetting academic qualification and all those, they don't matter. The inventors who invented the things that today make up our life, none of them said, I have a PhD in this or PhD in that. It was the product, the end product. Really, that's how we remember them. Mm. So in going through this process, you're looking at there will be conflicts. There's always a conflict between who we are, who we have learned to become, and who we want to become, right? In going through that process, how do you build character through that process? What kind of, how do you, how do you and you, earlier on in your submission, you seem to be very anchored in Christ. How do you build character from this process? Because there, sometimes the chaos can be a lot. The conflict within, as you're rediscovering who you are, irrespective of everything that has happened in and around you. And it makes you a different kind of person. Sometimes you like, sometimes you don't like. So how does that, how can you use that even to develop character? Well, um, the way I see it, or the way I look at it is, one, <clears throat> my higher purpose in life is shaping how I show up in the world. Mm. So it is helping me to shape my character. For instance, I always tell myself, because we do a lot of work with children, we are in schools, we are doing training and other things. So for instance, when I go and stand by Loto Kios, what I am thinking about is, if one of the students we have trained is passing by with their parents, hey, look at Uncle Michael, look at Uncle Michael. <laughs> and then their parents say, who is that? Say, oh, the man who comes to teach us leadership. <laughs> hey, and he's standing by looking at us. <laughs> so the fact that we have a higher purpose yeah. helps me to shape my character. I mean, imagine I go to a nightclub and I drink my head off. And then as I'm coming out and in this drunken stupor, one of the children that we have trained in schools is standing by. How am I going to explain to him the difference between what I taught him about purpose in life, about goals, and the current state in which he finds myself? So I think when you have a higher purpose, it shapes your character mm. or it shapes the behaviors that you engage in. Mm. Two, when you are grounded, we just spoke about knowing who you are. When you are grounded, it also helps to shape it. So you don't put on pretenses. You don't do what you can't do. And you know that in our Hinefa family, we don't do that which we don't have the capacity, whether financial, physical, or whatever, to do. We don't put up as what you see is what you get. So I think really is about being comfortable with who you are. Being comfortable with who God has created you to be whether physiologically, physically, or biologically. Mm. You don't need anybody's body. I don't need a shirt to make me feel good. I feel good. Anytime I wake up, I feel good. And I could be wearing <laughs> a sports jersey or anything of the, of the sort. So that's really what this boils down to. That one, how do you want to show up to the world? That's your character. That's what you do every day. That's how you engage other people. 
and provided that you have a center, you have a true north, provided that you have settled on your values, that's one other thing, yeah. your values. You know, Ohineva, we have our three values. Values, and then also, how do you want the world to see you? How do you show up to the world? I think if you put all this together, it will inform the way you come across. That is what we call character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in developing that character, we still haven't really talked about, I like what you've said very much, but I'm also looking at the conflict that the person goes through internally in trying to understand the fact that I was created a certain way. I have been nurtured a certain way. And yet there's a different character that I want to portray to the world. So for me to get to that different character that I want to portray to the world, I must still unravel that who I am versus that who I have become based on nurturing and based on my environmental influences, my experiences, as, and juxtapose that to who I want to become. How does one deal with those conflicts? I think there's conflict when you haven't quite settled on who you are or you haven't quite discovered who you are. Yeah. For me, the conflict stops in the moment you discover who you are, and that is shaping who you want to become. The conflict will stop. And so if there's a conflict in the way you want to show up, in who you want to become, and who you are versus who you are trained, it means you, quite, you, you haven't quite settled. Which means you don't quite you answer are. all those questions. Exactly. As to what makes you exactly. sad, what makes you happy, exactly. what... Like, That's why there's still conflict. Genuinely. Yeah, because it means that your inner man is still struggling yeah. with something. All right, and that you need to figure out what that That's is. That's right. And you may probably then need a external help to be able to do it thoroughly. Right. Yeah. Talk to a coach, a mentor, a counselor, a psychologist, somebody to help you to unravel that. So I'm looking at the domains and it looks like we've done we've done five out of the ten. So let's see how we navigate the rest of the five. Um, but you didn't score character and I think you didn't score emotional health either. Emo no intellectual. Intellectual. Both intellectual emotional. No intellectual I scored. scored. I scored That's seven. Seven, okay. Yeah. The emotional? Emotional, I will score another seven. Okay. Because you worry me sometimes. So, <laughs> uh, emotional, it is still somewhere but to if go I trigger you, Is it me triggering you or is something that's been triggered inside of you? Both. So you then, are triggering something inside of me. <laughs> <laughs> but your response to it is what makes the difference. So then I don't yeah, have so anything to do with I'm, it. I'm still building my capacity to respond fully to you. Ah. Yeah. It must be powerful. <laughs> so that's yeah. okay. So then character. Character, I, 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 I would give myself a very high score. And uh, I think maybe nine um, over the, especially since founding Lead Africa, I think I've been more put together and I've been more aware of how I want the world to perceive me. And I think that if there's ever been a period in my life where my private life and my public life have synced, it's been the last 10 years or so. So um, I'm, I'm doing good. Great stuff. Yeah.